Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the video. Now the vehicle I've got for you today is a 2013 Ram 1500 and as you can see, the outside is absolutely filthy but it's packing a heck of a lot more mess than what you see right now. All right, well just before I show you what's waiting inside, we'll take a look around the outside of the truck and it's pretty clear the wet and mucky roads we've had recently haven't been kind to it as the entire truck has been painted brown with dirt and is in desperate need of my pressure washer especially the wheels and wheel wells, but I'm not even sure if that's the worst part as the inside of the truck is quite the disaster too. It looks like the owner's dog has had an absolute field day in here as not only are the back seats incredibly dirty, there's even paw prints up on the dash. Overall, the inside of this truck needs some serious work to undo this mess, but just before we dive into all the hair and kibble, take a second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you never miss out on a future video I post a new one like this every week. Okay guys, well I cannot wait to get working on this truck and get it completely transformed and looking brand new again. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, well getting to work with the pressure washer now, and I know I've mentioned it before, but pressure washing is definitely my favorite part of a detail because it offers such instant satisfaction and because really it's just fun. A vehicle like this can go from super dirty to looking super clean in just a matter of minutes, so it's very enjoyable to see. And I also wanted to let you know that I was able to record the customer's reaction on this one, so make sure to stick around until the end of the video to catch that as it's a good one. starting on the tailgate now and you might notice that I didn't have to put my mitts on today and that's because it's actually warmed up a bit since last week and the double truck detail so that's very welcome at this time of year however it's not going to last as we're supposed to get a pretty good cold snap soon and even though I have to deal with it every year I still wish our winters weren't quite so bad. Okay, so knowing how dirty this truck was, it's going to be imperative to get the underside sprayed off really well as there is no doubt a ton of road salt that would otherwise be missed and start to cause rust. So using my undercarriage washer, I'll get it sprayed off really well, being sure to go over it multiple times. And if you're curious as to where you can get one of these undercarriage sprayers, 
The link is down in the description for you and it's definitely a tool I would recommend as they come with a standard quarter inch quick connect coupler that can hook up to most pressure washers. Now, not something I have to use in the winter very often, but I'll get some bug remover sprayed on the front end to help break down all the bug guts that are stuck on. All right, now one step that can't be overlooked is the decontamination of the paint. So I'm going ahead and spraying on some of my Detail Geek iron remover, which is available on my website at detailgeekautocare.com. And that's going to quickly dissolve the iron particles turning purple while it does. And in a couple of minutes, the whole truck is basically bleeding purple. So I'll then quickly get that sprayed off with the pressure washer. Now as I get to work removing all the garbage and personal items from the truck, I wanted to quickly remind you guys that the second annual Detail Geek Awards video is up on the channel as of a few days ago. It's basically a bit of a recap of the best and worst of 2021, and I award winners in a bunch of different categories. Mike even picked up a couple for his cameo appearances throughout the year.
Now for the stubborn dog hairs, I'll grab my lily brush, which is able to easily pull those hairs out of the fiber so they can be sucked up. Now as I work my way around the truck, you might be wondering why I didn't remove the front seats today, and that's simply because with the design of them I had really, really good access underneath and could not only reach anywhere that I needed to, but there didn't happen to be any dirt or stains under them that would have necessitated them to come out, so like I've said before, I'll remove the seats when I can't clean up to my standards with them still in the vehicle. All right, well, starting on extracting the carpets now, and I figured it was a good time for this week's members question, which comes from Melody, and it's do you listen to music or a podcast when you detail, and what music or podcasts are your favorite? So the answer to that is yes, I'm always listening to music while I work. In fact, I pretty well have music playing in my whole house audio system 24 seven. Most of the time it's country music, although I do enjoy artists like Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift too, but lately I've been cycling through some of the older groups like the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and the Eagles.
Moving to the driver's foot, well, and while the carpets aren't visually all that dirty, there were a few spots that did have some dirt and stains embedded in them, but that's no problem for the combo of Lightning Fast, the drill brush, and Bissell. And to answer a question I see asked all the time, the carpets and seats typically take a few hours to dry, although they do take a little bit longer in the winter. Here's everything pulled out of the RAM today. Gross. Starting on the dash, and I'm not really too sure how a mess like this happens, but I would suspect it was from the owner's dog, though either way the cleanup is the same, use the steamer and some APC, and because I aim for perfection in my details, I always clean every inch of the interior, including inside the glove compartments.
moving to these really dirty back seats and the steamer is the only viable way to get these clean as the dirt is really embedded in them. So using some leather cleaner and the brush attachment, it only takes a minute and the dirt and grime is basically just melted off so that I can simply wipe it clean with a microfiber towel. And then once I've got all the leather clean, I'll apply some conditioner using a microfiber applicator pad to leave them feeling soft and supple. Now, as you guys know, I typically will remove the door sill plates to make cleaning them easier. However, it's important to note that the plastic clips holding them on can be very delicate, so you definitely have to be careful when removing them and putting them back in. But like I said, having them out of the vehicle makes it far easier to clean as I can leave the mess on my garage floor instead of it ending up back on the clean carpets. Okay, moving outside now and it's time to turn our attention to the paint and finish the decontamination process. So I'll spray on some Detail Geek Quick Detailer to act as lubricant and we'll then use some clay bar to ensure that all the surface bonded contaminants like tar, tree sap or other road grime are removed from the paint. Once this is done, the paint will be perfectly clean and ready for a sealant. But the other thing the Quick Detailer is really good at is for in between waxing or sealing your vehicle as it can easily and safely remove light dust or fingerprints and it's the perfect thing to use to keep your vehicle looking its best after every wash. You can find it on my website at detailgeekautocare.com.
The second last step is to clean all the glass with some Detail Geek glass cleaner and waffle weave towel, which will easily remove any film or grime from the glass and leave it completely streak free. guys well a little over 10 hours later and the ram is looking absolutely incredible now if you guys agree with me make sure you hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on a future video enjoy the guitar outro and i'll see you guys in the next one